Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. We were just hanging out, enjoying a cheese plate, and about to make some dinner, right? Hopefully. Because <laughs> I am withering away. Clearly. <laughs> but we thought we would do an update video. We've, we've talked about things in the past that we haven't updated you guys on, so we figured we'd do that. And the first one, the biggest one, is how we're liking Vegas since we moved here, what, eight months ago? Nine months ago. What do you think of Las Vegas so far? Uh, it's good, nice weather, beautiful sky, and nice school. Same. All right. What was I saying again? You want to move back to Alaska? We talk a lot about moving back to Alaska and the many benefits that would come with that. Let's see, what are they? <laughs> So if I went back to my old facility where I worked, I already know what I'm doing there. I wouldn't have to learn. I'd just show up and make way more money than I do here, go home. And, and so that part of my life would be a lot less stressful and we'd be raking in a lot more money, like pretty significant amount. But other than that, it's, it comes down to, we have some friends and family that we would love to see again and everything else would be worse than it is for us here. <laughs> so yeah. we make less money here. It, obviously it's not shutting us down or anything, so it doesn't really count. Friends and family, we're gonna make it a point to go up at least once a year to Alaska. People are gonna come down here. That part is kind of worked out. And then again, everything else is better down here. We love the weather. It's chilly out, but we're not shoveling snow. We get to see the sun every day. The city so life nice. is super fun. Road trips are there if we want them. We did a really cool hike recently that's just right down the road. I don't know, What you got anything? You pretty much said it all, but the, yeah, friends and family that are in Alaska, of course we miss and wish we were closer, but being in the continental US now, we're getting to see family that we usually don't see when we live in Alaska. Yeah, there's so, a little bit of that. That part's really cool. We have a bunch of family coming in from all over for Thanksgiving, which is gonna be really fun. So, and I, I met my cousin Jim for the first time a yeah. couple weeks ago. He was in town for the NASCAR race and my grandparents who live in California were like, hey, cousin Jim's in town, you should hook up with him. So we met him for pancakes and prime rib <laughs> down at Dupar's best pancake you ever had in your life. It was really cool to meet him and we would have never had that opportunity if we were in Alaska. So totally. Yeah. Overall, yeah. this was a good move for us. The pay cut, the more stressful work environment, worth it. So that's that. The other thing is the, the kids are doing great. They're really thriving down here. I have no idea where I'm at in this frame. I'm just hoping this works out. I'm looking at the back of an iPhone right now. I have no clue. See. You're good. Am I good? Jeez. Anyway, what was I saying again? Oh yeah, the kids. The kids. They're, they're loving school. They're making so many friends. They're having a blast. They were out riding bikes today, which is Probably not something they'd be doing in Alaska because it's pretty cold up there now and probably starting to snow. They just got snow. It's already stuck. Oh, really? They got snow now? Yeah. Ah, suckers. <laughs> <laughs> now I can open this all the way. Yeah, more on that in a minute. Emery was doing cheerleading <clears throat> through the summer for the flag football team for her school. Nash was doing flag football, which that did not work out for him. He's, he's just not the type to, be, to enjoy that. He, he kind of enjoyed it. He just didn't, he wasn't driven to try hard or anything like that. And, and it was a time suck for us, like practice two nights a week on school nights and yeah. games on Saturdays. And he only played for five minutes and it was it's not worth it. It, was, it wasn't worth it for any of us. 
So. Hey Siri, set a timer for 12 minutes. Go 12 on. minutes, counting down. You know you don't have to say, <clears throat> hey Siri. I didn't know that. Okay. <laughs> you can just I say. I don't know what you mean by, hey Siri. Yeah. Anyway, we pulled Nash out of flag football and we put him in chess club, which is way better for him and us. He's really enjoying it. Him and I have been playing and he's pretty good. He's, I mean, he's seven years old. He's in the second grade and he, I mean, pretty good for that age. Um, he's got a ways to go, but he loves it. And it's cool to yeah. see him excel in that area. So all in all, the kids are doing really good. They're loving life here. <clears throat> Lots of friends, like we're saying, we went trick or treating the other night which was so fun. We were out for like three hours. The weather was yeah. perfect. And they this, made out with so much candy. The, we got two It's up high bins. where they can't get it. Okay, we- But this was, the reason this year was so great for trick-or-treating cause, is because it was the first year our kids got to experience trick-or-treating in warm weather. Like every year right. in Anchorage, you have to you put on your- up. Yeah, you put on your costume and then you put a jacket on over it. So. This was just a fun treat. We were walking around and you had shorts and a sweater on, a hoodie, yeah. jeans and a hoodie, and it, it was just, just cool. And then there, most people in the neighborhood we went to, like across the, over by the school, were sitting outside. They had their candy set up on a little fold out table. A lot of homes were decorated pretty nice. Uh, a couple DJs, I think, if I remember right. But. <laughs> It was just a really cool vibe, like <clears throat> Halloween the way it should be. So anyway, that, that was fun for all of us, but the, all that to say, the, the kids are thriving down here, which is really cool for us. Yeah, it's just so fun to see the kids loving school. And I can't remember if we mentioned this in a video before, but when we moved down here, everyone was saying, don't, oh, you gotta grab your drink, go ahead. <laughs> everyone said, don't put your kids in public school. It's like the worst in the country, if not, or like, I think it was the worst before Oklahoma or something, but horrible schools is what we heard. So then we were doing homeschool and it's a totally different vibe when you don't know anyone, you don't have any friends or a community that are doing it with you, which is what we had in Alaska. So we started toying with the idea of putting them in and we did it and it has just paid off a thousand fold. So that's been really cool. And it's weird to think about the fact that we ever homeschooled to begin with and doing it now just seems like there's no way we could do it. So it's just been a really cool, unexpected shift for our family. And We did it before because my schedule is gonna be crazy. For the rest of my career, I'm gonna have some weird set of days off. So homeschool made a lot of sense for reasons other than the, that it was set up well. I don't, I'm just saying there were so many reasons why homeschool made sense in Alaska. Here, yeah. it really didn't make sense <clears throat> Cause we didn't have the community and I was going it nuts. was going to cost us a ton of money. Oh yeah. That's which, a, the other thing is that for any homeschoolers out there, Alaska unbeknownst to us is one of those, the States that gives out the most money. They give you like 32, 2,800 to like, depends on the thing on the program you go with, but we would get 3,600 bucks a year per kid to homeschool our kids. So it was worth it here. They don't give you anything. So, so as far as, work for me it's been a whirlwind january i came down here got to my new facility and was thrown right into the classroom and after that into the lab which is where they use fake airplanes to kind of get you spooled up on how traffic flows and went straight to the floor about six weeks later was training away and it was overwhelming like it was a lot it was, you feel like you're drinking from a fire hose and the training at a Tracon, at least this one, is a lot different than at a center. It's a it's a much more gradual on ramp at a center and here it's just like you're in it and it's it's on. You're you're kinda overwhelmed. At least that's how I felt. And then turns out I had to go to Oklahoma for two months to get some training and then I came back and did the classroom and lab thing again and now I'm back on the floor. So that was all over the course of eight months and it's been a lot. So it's added to the stress of everything. It's been one of the bigger challenges that I can remember, but at this point 
I'm starting to get more comfortable with traffic and um, I'm just showing up every day, doing what I can. And I think in a couple of months I'll be certified and able to show up to work and just do my job, which is gonna be a huge relief. So it's going relatively well. All in all, I, I don't have much to complain about. It's going well and it's a great job. Okay, so also related to work, I, I mentioned a, a, a while back that we were looking into trying to invest in a business or something like that. So just to get you up to speed on that, it's not gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're bailing on that whole plan. I did spend a couple of months looking into buying a franchise. I looked at like a, a cycle bar, a dog grooming thing, some other boutique senior citizen uh, fitness thing, a spa, but what I learned in doing all the research is you have to have employees to run these things and that's a total nightmare. A lot of these franchises are mostly passive, but it's like five to 10 hours minimum. A lot of them are like 20 to 30 plus hours. So we were like, okay, we, we can't handle that right now. I got a full-time job and it just wasn't gonna work. I wasn't gonna put that on crystal or anything. So we we're still kind of looking at bizbysell.com, looking at private businesses that are going up for sale and we're kind of open to the idea, but the problem is we gotta pay for landscaping and a new car in a couple months and we just we pretty much decided we're gonna use all of our cash to pay for that so we don't have payments and if we're ever gonna do a business or anything like that, then it'll just be down the road or it'll have to be done some other way. So yeah, that's basically we're, we're, we're no longer pursuing that. Push this thing back in, which leads us into the house update, which this is gonna be super brief because we're gonna do a more like focused house update because there's a lot of really exciting things happening, but Man, that smells good. Mm. We've been going through this process of working with a Woodside representative to get things repaired or finished. And that person communicates with us, communicates with contractors, and we slowly get things done. But uh, total plot twist, we had someone show up yesterday, another representative of Woodside from a different development. And we'll put it in another video, but things are shifting drastically, we think for the better. We were so encouraged by this visit from a couple people from Woodside and we're, we're really excited with uh, what they plan to do. So we'll put all that in another video uh, when we do a house update, but as far as like getting the house finished and repaired and all that, we're very, very encouraged. Um, pretty excited to tell you about it. So yeah, that's all we got for you. You want to close it out? Are we in frame? I don't know, but you're always so much better on camera. I like to be behind the scenes and edit. She's but the best. We'll I'll close it out with she's you. Better, <laughs> she, she's better than me at most things. I'm just better at being a jerk. <laughs> All right. We hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for our house update coming soon. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Oh, bye. See, that sounds dumb too. <laughs> <laughs>